In this video, we're going to learn how to use Excel's future value function to calculate the future value of a sum of money that you invest today. We're going to use it to work out the future value of an investment that requires only one payment. And then we're going to use it to calculate the future value for an investment that requires multiple payments over time. And if you'd like to download a copy of the template that we use in this video, or if you'd like an explanation of the theory behind future value, check out the links in the description below. Okay, so let's go to Excel now and get started. Okay, over here in Excel and on the tab called One Payment, we're going to start off here and we're going to answer the question, what will $1,000 invested now be worth in five years time? So we've got our variables down here. We've got five time periods We've got an investment amount of $1,000 and we've got a rate of return or interest rate of 5%. So the first thing we're going to do down here on this line called investment one is we're going to manually work out the future value of our investment. And we're going to do that year by year. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here in year zero is just bring down the $1,000, which we've done with a simple cell reference to C5. And then in cell D10, we're going to calculate the value of the investment at the end of year one. And to do that, we start by putting in an equal sign, and then we grab the value of the investment, which is going to be the $1,000 in cell C10. And then we put in a multiply sign and open brackets, so we can multiply it by one plus the rate of return, which is in cell C6. And then we'll make that a fixed cell reference by pressing F4 and then close the brackets to get our answer, which is $1,050. So at the end of the first year, our $1,000 has grown by 5%, which gives us $1,050. Then to calculate year two, we can simply copy our formula across and then we'll click into it to have a look. And we can see that it's grabbing the $1,050 as the start point, and then it's adding 5% interest on top of that, which gives us $1,103 at the end of year two. And we can drag this across to year five and it will do exactly the same thing. So I'll just fill without formatting there so I don't lose the green formatting in column H. And then we'll just double check year five to see that it's referenced the value of the investment in year four and then it's added on another 5%, which is exactly right. So all of our formulas are working perfectly. And if we come down here, where we've just got a sum function to add up the investment one line, we can see that we've manually calculated that the future value of our investment is $1,276. Okay, so let's see how to do that with a proper future value function in Excel. So we'll do it over here. And the way to get started is to type in equals and FV for future value, open the brackets, and then you can see we've got some variables that we need to fill in. The first one is rate, and the rate is 5% in cell C6. And I'm just going to make that an absolute cell reference with F4, and then we press comma. The next one is the number of periods, which is five up in cell C4. And then I'll just make that an absolute cell reference as well and then press comma. The next one is for payments. And you use that if there's regular payments being made in each period, but we don't have that. We're just making a one-off investment. So we don't have to put anything in there. So we'll just leave it blank and press comma. And later on, you're going to see when we do an annuity, how you actually do put something in there for the payment variable. Okay, so now we've got the option here to put in a present value of our investment, which we are going to do, and it's the $1,000 in cell C5. And I'll make that an absolute cell reference too. And then finally, we need to put in a type variable. And you can see Excel is bringing up a little help box saying that if the payment is timed at the end of the period, we should put in a zero. But if the payment is timed at the beginning of the period, we should put in a one. Now we want the payment to be timed at the beginning of the period, so we'll put one. And then we can close the brackets 
and we get the answer of minus $1,276. So the reason it comes up as a minus is that the present value function in Excel assumes that we're making a cash outflow because we're investing money and cash outflows in finance are represented by a minus. So you can leave it like that if you like, or if you would rather display it as a positive number, all you need to do is go into your formula, put a minus sign after the equal sign, click on enter, and it will come up as positive $1,276. Okay, so now we've worked out that in five years time, our $1,000 investment at a compounding rate of 5% is going to be worth $1,276. Okay, so let's go over to the next tab now and we'll see how we can put together a little calculator so that we don't have to do all of those steps. So all I've done here is I've got the same sort of setup where the future value function looks up the variables it needs, but without having to use the table where we've worked it out year by year. And the reason you might want to set up something like this if you're doing future value calculations is that once you've got it set up, you can simply come in and change your variables. So if we change the number of periods to five, like we have on the other worksheet, so now we've got five periods, a $1,000 investment amount, and a 5% rate of return, which is the same as we've got over here, we get the same answer of $1,276. So now that we've confirmed that our calculator works, if you want to change the number of periods like that, then you don't have to go and create more columns and more periods like we did over here. Okay, and you can change anything you like. You can change the investment amount, you can change the rate of return, and as you can see, it works perfectly as a simple calculator with Excel giving you the answer by using its future value function. Okay, so that's how future value works for a one-off investment. What about if you're going to invest money with regular payments over time? Let's take a look at our annuity tab to find out. Okay, so over in the annuity tab, we're going to answer the question, what will $1,000 invested each year be worth in five years time? So up here, we've got five periods again. We've got an investment amount of $1,000 and we've got a rate of return as 5% again. But this time, instead of having just one investment amount in the beginning, we're going to have one investment amount each year for five years. So investment one will start with the $1,000 here at year zero. And then the first bit of interest is added at the end of year one. For investment two, it'll start with the $1,000 we've got here in year one and then add the first bit of interest at the end of year two. And that pattern carries on all the way down through the whole five years. So the formulas that we've got in here are just the same as the formulas we've got in the one payment worksheet. And you can have a look at how they work by clicking into them and seeing which cells they reference. To finish off in column H, we've got a line here for future value manually calculated where we add up the totals of each of the five investments. And you can see the grand total in cell H15 is $5,802. So that's the future value of our annuity. But once again, you don't have to do it that way. You can use the future value function instead. The only difference between the way we use it here and the way we use it for the one-time payment is that we've got the investment amount of $1,000 in the PMT or payment variable instead of in the present value variable like we did for the one-time payment calculation. So the payment variable is referencing cell C5 while the present value variable has nothing in there this time. So the thing to remember is that if you're using the future value function for one-off payments, you use the present value variable, but if you're using the future value function for an annuity, you use the payment variable. Okay, so I'll just press escape to get out of there and we can see that we got the right answer with our future value function. And once again, you don't have to do it this way with a big table of formulas. You can create a simple calculator. So let's go over to the annuity calculator tab where we can see that we've got our variables up here and we've got our future value function set up in exactly the same way as we did on the other worksheet.
And once again, you can go ahead and change the variables. So for example, let's put five in there. So we've got five periods and $1,000 being invested per year at a rate of 5%. And that gives us 5,802, which is exactly the same answer we got over here when we did it manually. And again, you can go ahead and use the calculator by changing the variables to whatever you like. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. Now you know how to use the future value function in Excel if you're making a one-time investment or if you have an investment where you're making multiple payments over time.